Before we get started creating our giraffes and starting our artworks, we want to take a second to look at the color wheel. You've seen this before because we've talked about our different color families and how they work around the color wheel. For a quick reminder, our primary colors, yellow, red, and blue, are split around the color wheel. The colors that come in between them are called our secondary colors. These are the colors we can mix and make by combining our primaries. We have green, orange, and purple as our secondary colors. Split that color wheel right in half. You'll have your warm colors, yellow, orange, and red. And then on the other side, the cool colors, green, blue, and purple. But what about these complementary pairs? They are opposite of each other on the color wheel. So these pairs look like this. We have red and green together, orange and blue, and yellow and purple. Complements work together to complement each other. They make each other stand out, they pop, they look really great in your artworks when they are put side by side. But when combined and mixed together, they will make brown. So when using complements, be mindful not to let your colors mix or else you'll end up with a mucky, gross brown. We are gonna be using the complements in our artworks today, so I want you to think about which color pairing is your favorite, red and green, blue and orange, or yellow and purple. Take that lock in your brain, you're gonna need it for later. So we're gonna get started drawing our giraffes. You're gonna receive two papers. The first one is a longer skinny white paper. Turn tall like a portrait, put your name at the tip top, just your name. And then on our blue paper, also a longer skinny one turned tall portrait, we wanna put our name, teacher, and our seat color and number. Your sub will help you out getting all of this information filled out. If you need help spelling your teacher's name or need help with your seat color number, we will get that fixed up for you really quick. So you can pause the video here. Once everybody's ready, we will move on. All right, so now that we are all ready to go, we are going to set this one off to the side. You can even put it in your folder just in case and we don't get time to get to it today. So you can go ahead and completely remove this one out of your way. You need to have your white paper, flip it over to the blank white side, and this will be the side where we are drawing our giraffes. To start off drawing our giraffe's head, we're gonna make sure we leave some space at the top to add in the ears, as well as what looks like the horns on the top of the giraffe's head. So I'm gonna look at it like roughly three finger space at the top. I'm gonna put a little mark there so I know this is where I'm gonna start the top curve of my head. So I have some room up at the top. So try to leave three fingers, at least three, maybe even drop down a little bit lower since your fingers are a little smaller than mine. All right, so the next thing we're gonna do is we're going to start with a curving line that's going to go either right on that dot that we made, that little spot, or just right below it. And it's going to be the top of the giraffe's head. So I'm gonna start a little wide. I'm gonna curve up and over, and then come back down. Our head is gonna end up looking like an upside down egg, wider at the top, skinnier at the bottom. So go ahead, create your first curve. Remember, you can pause the video as needed so everyone can get caught up. So no need to panic if we are moving a little fast, we can always pause. And then we're going to bring this side down, coming in, you can see it's starting to make that egg shape, almost even like a balloon. And then a little curve at the bottom and we're coming back up. So we have that upside down egg shape, shape to start our giraffe's head. All right, on top of the head, we are gonna add in the horns, which are actually called their ossicone. They are ossified cartilage, very hard covered in skin pieces. So we're going to start first right here in the middle. I'm gonna come up, I'm gonna make a curve that goes back down and back up, and it comes back and touches back to the head. So easy way to think of this. You're like on a roller coaster. You go up, 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 oh, you're going down. Now we've gone down and we're going up, 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 and woo, back down. Beside this is where we're gonna add in the ears. I like to think of them as almost like leaf shapes. They are one curve and one other curve, leaving a little space. Same thing on the other side. And I like to have a little bit of a wiggle on mine as well as adding in that extra curve detail just right along the top. Each ear does not have to match up. They are allowed to be a little different. Next up, let's start getting some details on the face. So to start our face at the bottom, we're gonna bring in the curves for the nose. I'm gonna start right here, bring in one curve, match up on the other side, same thing, add in our other curve, leaving a little gap between the two almost like we were making a heart. 
I'm gonna draw in the ovals for the nostrils. I'm not gonna color them in with pencil. We are gonna be adding in some color later. I'm just gonna leave them open for right now. And then going from this little spot that we left open, you ready? We're gonna make a big curving line that comes up, touches to the side of the face. Big curving line that comes up and touches to the side of the face. Taking a look at your shoulder partner and the people at your table, is it okay if everybody else has different looking heads than yours? Of course, if yours is wider or skinnier, that's okay. Everyone's gonna have a giraffe that is unique. For the eyes, I'm going to start with a U-shaped curve, goes close to the edge, and I'm actually gonna close it off with a straight line to start. He's gonna look a little angry. And we're gonna do the same thing on this side. And I'm just looking to see, I see I drew this one a little bit bigger, so I'm gonna make this one just a little bit longer. We are gonna color these in later. And giraffes do have quite impressive eyelashes. So coming from the top, I'm going to make just a little flick that goes up and over to start my eyelash line. Same thing over here, up and over. For the neck of the giraffe, right over where we started that nostril, I'm gonna bring my line. It's gonna come down skinny and get a little bit wider. And let's do the same thing on the other side. Skinny, getting a little bit wider. Don't want your neck to be super teeny tiny, so if you have just a little skinny neck, add in, go back, thicken it up, add in an extra line, because we need room to add in our spots. The spots on the giraffe's neck are all sorts of fun wiggly blobs. You can have some that touch to the edge and some that run off the side. It would wrap around the back side of the neck. You can have some that sneak up under the head. So we're gonna go ahead and fill in some wiggly shapes for the neck. Jumping up back up to the top of the face, we have where the nostrils and this bottom part is actually where the nose and the mouth would separate. So I'm gonna put a little bit of a curving line. So I know that is my little bit of my bottom jaw sticking out of my giraffe. And I also like to put some little spots up here on the face as well. And then optional, if you would also like maybe a larger spot up top, maybe a couple smaller ones around it. And our next step is starting to color with our complementary color pairs. Remember, you are going to be choosing which pair you like. Do you like blue and orange, red and green, or purple and yellow? Super careful when we are coloring with our complementary pairs that we do not mix and mingle our pastels too much or else we might end up making brown. So for my complementary pair, I'm gonna choose blue and orange. Now there are some different tints and shades, some lights and some darks of the colors. Like you can see, I have a light blue and a dark blue. I am gonna be able to use both because they are both blue. For my orange, I'm just gonna stick to using just my one orange pastel. Our goal is we are gonna finish filling in all of our spaces with our complementary pa complementary pairs. But there are a few spots that I don't mind, of course, if you leave and color them in black, like the nose and the eyes and the eyelashes. In fact, it's probably best that we start there to go ahead and get those out of the way so we don't forget. So using my black pastel, I'm going to color in the nose, nostrils. I'm going to do the eyes and the eyelash. And I like to leave one little white spot in the eye. So when I color, I do make sure I leave that little twinkle sparkle, that white spot. Hold on to your black oil pastel. You will need it for outlining once we are done coloring with our other pastels. So again, going back now to using our complementary colors, blues and orange for me, if you're choosing to do purples and yellow, if you're doing um, our other complementary pair of red and green, that is totally up to you. Remember, tints and shades of the colors do count. So a light blue, a dark blue, or if you had a light orange and a dark orange, light blue, green, dark green, all counts. So I'm gonna go ahead and fill in my giraffe using my complementary pairs. 
And there we go. I have colored in my giraffe with my complimentary colors, my blues and my orange, but it's not quite done yet. I can still see some pencil lines in here. I have some spots where I didn't want to get too close to accidentally mix my colors. So I have a little bit of some white space. You can see I did my best to stay inside my lines. I'm not scribble scrabbling everywhere, even though we are going to be cutting these out. But our final step is we're going to go back over our pencil lines now with our black pastel. You might have noticed when you were coloring around the nostrils in the nose if a little bit of that black was trying to smudge in with it. it leaves a little bit of gray behind it's okay in those few small spots but we definitely didn't want that all over our giraffe so now that we are done with color our final color can be outlining with black to keep it clean so I'm gonna go ahead and finish outlining everything else with my black pastel and check it out it looks so awesome with our black outlines really helps clean it up you might have some little crumbs of your pastel on your paper you can always Tap your paper to help get some of those crumbs off lightly, very lightly. Use your hands to dust it because these are oil pastels and they will smudge and smear. So if you are pushing hard with your finger, you will smudge them. So I'm just going to lightly brush them off. Again, I can tap them on the table. And then before we go, you're gonna wanna definitely make sure you get a wipe to wipe all of these away. You don't wanna leave them on the table because the next person who comes in, if they accidentally smush one, it does smudge and smear. So make sure that you are using your wipe to get rid of any little crumbs of oil pastel. So make sure it's cleaned off because our next step is we are going to be cutting it out. Now hold tight really quick to that rag before you give it a toss. We might need it in just one more second because I have an option for you if you're interested. Something else that we can do with our oil pastels and the back end of a paintbrush. This black handle paintbrush is perfect for this. It's something called scruffito. It means scratched art. So you can actually take the back end of your brush going on top of your pastels you could scratch in some patterns onto your giraffe. Now, any of these little crumbs that come off, I could wipe onto my rag, as well as at the end, doing the same technique, tapping and then wiping all the way at the same time. So I'm gonna use the back end of my brush to add a couple of patterns into my oil pastel before I cut it out. So we're doing a little scruffito today. All right, so taking a look up close, you can see some of those scratched away designs that I did. So as it's taking away a little bit of the pastel, it's showing that stained bit of paper behind it. So it's not perfectly white, it's like our lighter color of our color that we had chosen. So once I have finished my scruffito, again, make sure that you are wiping away any oil pastel from the end of your paintbrush. If you're doing the tapping and getting the crumbs off, no big deal, take your wipe, make sure that you've wiped down your space. And next we are going to cut out. So I'm going to use my scissors, cutting along my black line, not right on top. I'm just gonna go right off to the side. So I still keep some of my black line on there. I'm gonna cut out my entire giraffe. When you get close to that eyelash, be very careful not to completely cut off your eyelash. Go slowly around it. All right, and now we can take our scrap and our dirty rag over to the trash can. Trash that, go ahead, get rid of it, make sure your space is cleared. We're gonna bring back out those blue papers, making sure our name, teacher, color number is on the back. And we're gonna be gluing our giraffe's head onto our background. I like to make sure that it matches up to the bottom flat edge of the paper. So I don't want it to be floating to look like he does not have a body. I wanna make sure that flat edge matches up to the flat bottom. We're going to use our liquid glue. Remember our glue rule, dot, dot, not a lot. Is it okay to have lots of dots of glue? Yes, as long as they are glue raindrops and not glue puddles. So I'm just tap, tap, tapping all the way along the back of my giraffe. Carefully pick it up. Make sure I've got my space ready to go. If a little bit of oil pastel has gotten on your paper, that's okay. Lay it down, and then this is important. Remember, oil pastel smudges and smears, so we don't wanna be rubbing. We wanna just lightly hold our hand in place, count to about 10 seconds, and then we're going to carefully pull away. No smudging, smearing, just lightly placing our hands. If you feel like you need to move up here to the top to get those little ears and the top of the head, 
lightly using my hands. You might get a little bit of pastel on you, but definitely better than smudging and smearing. So no rubbing, just lightly pressing. All right. And then our final step is going to be using our white Prismacolor pencils that do stand out very nice and bright to create some patterns behind our giraffe, our complimentary colored giraffe. So even though my giraffe colors I chose were blue and orange, if you have a purple and yellow, or if you have a red and green one, that is awesome. We are all gonna be gluing down onto a blue sheet of paper, so it doesn't matter what complimentary pair you had, everyone has the blue, and I'm going to choose a pattern for my background. This can be any pattern you like. We wanna see patterns, we don't wanna see scribble scrabbles. I think I'm gonna be doing a striped pattern. So anywhere would look like it goes around the other side of the neck. I'll just finish it off over there, a little bump and jump. And some of my stripes, I'm gonna put polka dots on the line. Others, I might do some thicker lines, maybe even sneak in a couple of zigzags. So I'm gonna go ahead and finish up my background. Big thing to remember while you're doing your patterns is watch your hand, make sure you're not laying your hand on top of your pastels. So if I was working on this line, you can see that I'm making sure my hand is resting over here. I can rotate my paper to make it in a better position so my hand does not have to rest on top of the oil pastel. We don't wanna smudge and smear it. So keep your hands off the pastel as best as you can. I'm only really using it just to kind of hold in place, but even I could be holding on the paper instead and that's probably our better option. So try to keep your hands off your pastel. And there we go, I have finished up my background. I've had so much fun just going through and doing different types of lines in the background. Of course, you can change it up. You can do different things like different shapes or maybe even one design, like maybe you want spirals all in the background behind your giraffe. That is absolutely up to you. And now that it is completely done, again, make sure that you are not smudging and smearing. These will get collected. They will not stay in your folders because we don't wanna risk them getting messed up inside of our folders. They will go in a separate safe spot in case this is one of your art show pieces. So make sure that you do have your name, teacher's name, seat color number on the back. Your giraffe is completely glued down. You have finished up your backgrounds. This should have taken us about maybe two, two classes and maybe the first 15 minutes of another class. And then we'll be ready to move on to our next project. Awesome job, guys. I enjoyed getting to do this with you through our YouTube channel. I hope you had fun and I will see you for the next project.